Hello, and this is Let's Talk with Paula. And I am so glad to be here. My guest got me so riled up in the spirit <laughs> that um, I appreciate you, Esquire, okay? Okay, everybody getting these names. So you notice I called you Esquire tonight. I know, I, I got know, all three yeah. shows, Esquire, okay? Okay. Um, but um, I, I'm gonna say that, that he has been with me and his family, I mean, you know, he got a two-year-old beautiful daughter. She, he has a handsome son and he has a beautiful wife. Okay, so let's get that out the way, okay? Um, but he has stuck with these shows with me through thick and thin and, and I appreciate you. And I appreciate the group that we had at one point where it was like eight of us that were sitting here, you know. And then we had to get cut down to six. Then we got cut down during COVID to nobody. Yeah, and then we got down is. to three people, okay. But we had information that we had that we could give everybody that they needed, you know. I mean, because everybody was an expert, you know. And that's what I try to do is give people not what I think. I try to have the experts tell you. So I want my good friend, the ex choir to tell you who he is. I know you know, he's a household name viewers. But anyway, we have to, do. that's just part of being on television. You gotta introduce, your guests have to introduce themselves, okay? Cause it might be, maybe we hope five more people that have never seen us before, okay? Right? <laughs> well, good evening. <laughs> and uh, I'm happy to be back on the show. Uh, my name is Donald Bell. I'm an attorney. I'm here in Maryland. Uh, specifically, I'm here in Prince George's County. Um, I've been here for 20 years. Uh, Prince George's County has become my home, and um, I enjoy serving the people of Prince George's County. Again, my name is Donald Bell, and I'm an attorney here in Prince George's County. And um, the area of law that I practice is consumer bankruptcy, so I don't represent businesses. I represent everyday people like you and I. Mm -hmm. And your phone number and your, um, your um, email address. Well, I'm gonna give you my phone number. My phone number is 301. Excuse me, this is not his house number, it's his business number, okay? <laughs> okay, go ahead. Three, yeah, you call the house, you're not gonna get an answer. <laughs> so 301-614-0535 is my home, is my um, office, office number. You, you got me on that one. I'm sorry, uh, it's the office 24 number. hours a day, seven days a week you call, somebody's gonna answer the phone. Um, so we're shooting this show right now in the evening time, so even if you call us right now, um, you're going to get a live person that's going to answer the phone and we will call you back. And I just want to say this because this just came up and I never even thought about Donald. I never even thought about even mentioning it. I mean, I mentioned it to my guests because we're taped, first of all, okay? And I guess the reason why it, it came in my spirit, so I'm being obedient, is that we're taped and you asked the question, well, when will it air, okay? Mm -hmm. Well, we know that the tornadoes were this week and it probably won't air until a week after, but at least you know that we're keeping up with what's going on, okay? okay. That's how you can kind of judge when the next show should come, okay? We are talking about, um, we talked about property taxes the, the, the week before because, well, two weeks before because it was doing property tax time, lane time. Okay. So sometimes when you see our show, some of the stuff might have gone, but we try to make sure we give you enough leeway time so that when it airs, it's still current events, okay? I'm talking about so far as when we tell veterans what they need to do, what the laws change, they move, um, the stuff that you tell us about what's going on with bankruptcy court, you know, it's still time for you to, the property tax that we're talking to. We also talked time. about the election. You know, and the, and the primary, elections, that's right. And we primary. talked about uh, before time, cause, and, we, and we still want you to keep that up front in your mind as well, because you definitely need to do your homework. Um, I think that our country, oh, you should have never brought that up, but, <clears throat> the elections are very important, and I'm telling you that I, from watching the news, I, I put it on from watching the news. Mm -hmm. From watching the news, it sounds like, and, and, and I kind of agree with him in a way, how can we put a convicted felon in the White House, okay? The person, without saying their name, the state that they live in, will not allow convicted, conv mm. convicted felons to vote, okay? Now, I saw that on the news, okay? Mm -hmm. That if nothing changes, he won't even be able to vote in his own state, okay? Now, that's kind of strange, okay? So, Paul, I'm gonna tell you something. And I learned this um, in 1990, 
two. Mm -hmm. um, because 1993 was the first year that I was able to vote. Mm -hmm. And um, um, a very astute politician from the great state of Arkansas said this. Mm -hmm. His name was Bill Clinton. Mm -hmm. He said, people will vote their pocketbooks. Mm -hmm. So the reason why Donald Trump is so popular is because people, when it comes down to it, they're going to vote in their own self interest mm -hmm. and if they're not if they feel like they're not better off mm -hmm. right now than they were four years ago mm -hmm. then that's the reason why that that's my opinion mm -hmm. so I think that has borne out over the last 30 some odd years mm -hmm. you know as I've you know as I've observed mm -hmm. um, you know uh, the voting mm -hmm. uh, particularly when it comes to national elections and things of that nature. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. People are gonna vote their own self-interest mm -hmm. and they go vote their pocketbooks. Mm -hmm. So right now we have issues with inflation. Mm -hmm. We've talked about this on your show before. Mm -hmm. You know, the price of eggs, the price of bread, mm -hmm. the price of milk, the price of butter, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And if people don't feel like the person in office is making a significant enough difference, mm -hmm. okay, so mm -hmm. they can support themselves and mm -hmm. support their families. Mm -hmm. That's how they'll vote for a convicted felon. And well, that's my opinion. The, the, but the Constitution rule of law, a convicted felon rule of law, he, a convicted felon, no matter who it is, I don't care who it is, they, they should not be able to... Uh, that's not in our Constitution. Mm, well, it just depends on who is looking at the law in, in the way they discuss it. I'm not even going to get yeah, into it. That's not, that's not, that's not part of, 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 of... I mean, different states have different rules in terms mm -hmm. of who can and who cannot vote. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, um, you know, in terms of... The cost. I, I don't. I don't. I don't think there 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 is an issue about being a convicted felon, and not being able to run. I think that from the experts that I've talked to, and I'm not going to get into this. That's why I've been staying away from this topic yeah. so much. That it is there. It's just the way that. Well, it's I think. Being I think the issue is, where was he convicted at? Because well, a president can a president can be impeached, and he can be convicted. He can be impeached by the House of Representatives. And he can be convicted by the Senate. Mm -hmm. Now, if something like that happens, then there may be issues as to whether or not that person is fit to be president of the United States. Mm -hmm. But a conviction in a state court matter, mm -hmm. I don't, you know, I don't know that that's going to disqualify. Well, I, I don't. I'm, yeah. I'm just saying that this from the trying to keep. That's why I try not yeah. to discuss that on this show, okay? Yeah. Because you get different um, scenarios from different people yeah. um, that are supposed to be the mm -hmm. people that know, that they reach out to. So that's why I try to, I mean, you know forever, I've been trying to stay off of this topic. But I think that the biggest thing that I can tell you to do, that I always tell you, just so I won't tip on this, this subject itself, is that you need to look up the rules for yourself, okay? Because the only thing I can tell you, he can tell you, but you need to look for yourself and find out what the rule is because you don't want to go and thinking that it's okay for you to do this and you haven't looked at anybody else to see whether or not they were qualified and you come to find out at the last minute, I can't do this, okay? So that's why I'm suggesting that and recommending, as I always do, I don't care who it is that's running for this election or what their office is, you need to look them up. We've got people that have been sitting in Congress and in the Senate. We've had them sit there forever. And what they might have said when they first came in, a lot of things have changed in this country and the world since they were first elected. So you need to go back and see whether or not they are, you know, doing what's good for our people. And to go back and say what you said, some of the stuff that's going on, the same thing happened to Obama, okay? Things that the president has tried to do, this current president has tried mm -hmm. to do, that all of them did not just start when he became the president. I have to say that it's in my spirit. They started when the previous president was in office. It carried over to this office. Yeah. He has the same problem that Obama had when he was in office because 
he doesn't have the votes that he needs from the congressionals, okay? Mm -hmm. And so that's why a lot of things that Obama tried to put in place, they changed, watered down, or they would not approve them. The same thing is happening with this president, so you need to know that. That inflation thing, don't blame it on the president. He's not the only one that has to vote on those things. Mm -hmm. You got a whole Congress to sit there on Capitol Hill that can either veto, do away with it, and it won't even hit the floor and you ever hear about it, okay? So that's why I'm telling you, I always tell you guys to go out there and look at a, um, Schoolhouse Rock so that you know how the bills and things are made and what happens and what power the president has and he does not have. So when we start, that's why I try to stay away from it. Go out there and look at it just and look at Schoolhouse Rock. It's a good tool, okay, on civics, okay, um, so that you know. But this president is having the same problem that President Obama had for two terms. Even though he got elected the second time, he still had the same problem because, uh, because of the Congress that was who the people that well, were sitting in power. I think that's just part of how our government works. Yeah. I mean, rarely is it going to be the case where, you know, people are going to agree, you know, on, on a course of action because people come from different, mm -hmm. come from different places mm -hmm. and they have different agendas mm -hmm. and you know um, somebody from the great state of Alabama may see things very differently than some someone from the state of, of Maryland they mm -hmm. see things because mm -hmm. you have a different culture mm -hmm. you have a different way of living you know you have a different way of thinking right so what's what's supposed to happen in Congress is you guys are supposed to get together um, to pose it that's a good word well I mean that, that I mean that does happen they get together and then you know we take a little bit from you a little bit from here and we try to we try to come up with some type of compromise or mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. That I mean, that's the great part of our our democracy because our democracy is supposed to be a chaos. It's supposed to. It's be. supposed to be chaos. It's supposed to be, you know, people from this state not yeah. agreeing with this state, or yeah. people from this faction not agreeing with this mm -hmm. faction, mm -hmm. and then you guys sort of, you know, put something together, and it's a you compromise. know, and, and compromise. Mm -hmm. And you know, some of the issues that we have sometimes is. Um, you know, and you know, I, you know, um, I, I, I read a book by somebody who, who wrote who wrote something about the Civil War, and what this individual said was is that the reason why, you know, the Civil War happened from you know in the 1860s mm -hmm. was, um, you know, our ability not to compromise, and that's sort of what makes this country great. It makes it it makes our democracy fragile, mm -hmm. you know. But it also makes it very strong and very, and, you know, and very durable mm -hmm. and, and flexible, mm -hmm. the ability to compromise. And, and that's in any organization. Yeah. You know, it does not have to be, you know, the people that sit on Capitol Hill. Yeah. I'm, I'm just saying that he has the same kind of problems um, that the um, other counterpart prior to the person you were talking about um, was was having okay but so I would say I would also tell you that Donald Trump probably thought that he had the same issues as well well he because did. he had people he did he had people on the left and he in the did. middle and who would not allow him to build his wall who would not allow him to ban the Muslims I mean he had like all types uh, but, of but he did get this wall built it just didn't get it finished the time when he left that wall is down there where he went down there and it started yeah, it but it's only about, what about 10 or 15 miles well, well, well I'm just saying it because he, he ran out of time okay so you know he started what yeah. he, he put in the place he did start the wall the wall got started you understand what I'm saying mm -hmm. but but you know so there are things that he every president is going to get come on Mm -hmm. Every president is going to get something that happened from the previous um, predecessor. We yeah. know that. So there's not nothing unique or new about that. But, but what is unique is that I've never had a president that talks more about Hitler and talks about the Third Reich and have it in their, in their, their news feeds and their, and their political stuff, and they had to pull it down once somebody made them realize that one of his clips that he had that whoever it was was doing it and it was talking about the third right i've never heard a president that says on the first day out of his mouth through news clips that say on the first day the first thing i'm gonna do i'm all those people that oppose me i'm gonna make sure i get back at them and, I'm gonna, and if i want to i might even shoot them okay not 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 what i'm saying not hearsay is what's actually been said so i'm saying do your own homework you well, need to I'm, look I'm and see. I'm going to say this also as a study, as someone who studies history. 
um, before the Third Reich became possible mm -hmm. in Germany mm -hmm. in the 1920s and the 1930s, mm -hmm. Germany was a democracy. Also, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they had a, they had a democratic uh, they had a democratic um, government. Mm -hmm. Now it, it went fr it came from a, from a monarchy to and it became a democracy. Mm -hmm. And democracies are so fragile because that democracy you know, um, evolved into sort of an oligarchy, oligarchy or a, um, you know, it became, you know, Adolf Hitler's own fiefdom, yes. you know, so to speak. Yes. So don't think that it's not impossible to happen here. Oh, you know? no, I'm saying that it's very much so, possible. So, I mean, but that's, that, that's, that, the, that's, that's, the, why that's I'm, the reason I'm, why you have to get out and you have to, you have to be vigilant about voting. Yes. You have to be vigilant about who you put in the office. Yes. Uh, because, you know, those people sitting in, in Capitol Hill, you know, uh, you know, we always talk about, you know, Marines being on the front lines, you know, and guarding this country. But, but you know, those people in Congress and the people that we put in the Supreme Court and the, and the people who become judges um, and, and sheriffs and things of that nature, I mean, they are the guardians of our of our democratic way of, 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 of life. And living. that's why I say that you need to go sue for all those things. I haven't just talked about any one particular person. Yeah. I've talked about the sheriffs and, and anybody. That's yes. right. Even a dog catcher, okay? He's an yeah. elected official, okay? The person yeah. in charge of them. Yeah. So I'm saying that you need to do for anybody that's on a ballot. You need to do it before you go into the polls. You need to look and see who is running and who is running for what. Um, a lot of people don't have money, so you don't see as many signs up around yeah. about who's running right now because they're going to wait until the last minute and then flood you with all of it. But by that time, you haven't had enough time to go look to see because you can go out there on the website if you could use a computer or you can check with your city council to find out who's running and, and, and whatever. You know? And I will say that's what the people in this county did mm -hmm. because we had a situation um, in the last primary Mm -hmm. where you had the one candidate who had been flooding the market with um, his with, with his commercials mm -hmm. and infomercials and things mm -hmm. of that nature. Mm -hmm. And then you had, you know, the person one from, came up. Yes, pr from Prince George's County, mm -hmm. Angela Alsobrooks, mm -hmm. who had her nose to the ground. Mm -hmm. She was out there talking to people, shaking mm -hmm. hands, meeting people. And she has proven results because of all of our offices that she has mm -hmm. held. And look what happened. I know. I mean, and so it doesn't, what happened. Yeah, and it's not about all about money. That's my point. It's not I all about money. I was presently, I was pleasantly surprised. I wasn't. You know, when she won. Oh, I, was, I wasn't surprised that she won. I really yeah. wasn't. Because like I said, she has a proven track record. Well, I'm, I was happy that she won, mm -hmm. but I was pleasantly surprised mm -hmm. that she won. Well, I'm glad. That sounds yeah. nice. I liked where you said I was presently, pleasantly surprised surprise. It's hard to say. One. Yes, it is. That's a tongue twister. I like that. Yeah. And, um, you know, so I'm, I'm, ve I'm very, I'm very happy for, I'm very proud. I, I'm very happy for her too, but yeah. I, I, I'm not surprised uh, yeah. you know, because of her track record. That's, yeah. that's what I got to go by. That's why I said you got to do your homework. If, if you haven't heard of it, you wouldn't have known, you know, I think what that's was going part on. Of what, happened, what you talk about on this show about people doing their homework. I yeah. think People did their homework. Yeah, I, I think and they she, did too. And she and she won. She won pretty pretty large. Pretty and she didn't have that many ads out there. Exactly. You know, at all. You yeah. know, in fact, it, almost toward the election, you saw seeing her. You yeah. know, a few little posters and you know a few little commercials on television. But I also noticed that there's a lot of veterans that are running for office this time. Okay. Okay. I've never seen so many veterans that are running for different offices in different places and different counties and different cities, even for Senate seats and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think that, and, I, and, I, and, I, and this is what came in my spirit after you were talking about protecting the borders, okay? I think that they're running now because they do want to make sure that our borders are protected. They do want to make sure that we still have the democracy that we're supposed to have in our country. They know firsthand what it, that other stuff looks like because they have fought in those wars. Very well said. And so I, Very think, well said. Yeah. I think that they're running because they're trying to make sure that, I don't care whether it's this one or that one, that democracy is still in this country, the United States, because they have seen war, the worst of war, and what it will do to a country, 
what it would do to a people. And I take my hat off to all of you. I have never seen so many veterans run for different political offices. And I take my hat off to you, okay? I was just surprised that one of y'all didn't run for president of the United States, but you still got time though, okay? <laughs> Depending on where you live, you know? But you gotta do your homework. And I think that them doing that is setting up a flag. Beware, pay attention, be vigilant, do what you have to do, because we need to protect this country's democracy. That was what the whole country was built on, not one person against another. It was all denominations, all different colors, mm -hmm. all different languages. They fled England because they didn't want to be under the rule of thumb, okay? And so it's for everybody. And then for those that didn't want to be here, that they brought over here by ships, okay? They, they were part of that. They were part of the building of this country well, as well. Well, we're just as much as part of it as, <laughs> I mean, our, our blood, sweat, and tears have helped, helped build this country. So mm -hmm. so we should have our own, own piece of the steak, you know, own piece of the pie as well, you know? Mm -hmm. So, of yeah. course. But it's all about doing your homework. Stop paying attention to those commercials. Stop, pay, stop paying attention to see how many veterans are now running. Because I didn't see as many that was running when we first started these primaries up. Mm -hmm. Watching, in the last two weeks, there have been a number of veterans that have just come up that's running for Congress. Okay, so, and, and, they're, and their theme all of us is to keep democracy alive, okay? They, they know what war looks like. For mm -hmm. those of us, you know what war looks like. You're a veteran. Mm -hmm. I, for those of us that have never been on that front row, to, to be able to see actually what goes on in these countries and things and the devastation and the, the, the bombings and the, 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 our veterans that come home that don't have limbs and the ones that don't come home at all and then the ones that, that have the horrible things that have happened to them, okay, that we know nothing about what that looks like. So, I mean, this just came in my spirit. I think that we need to have a veteran for the President of the United States because they know it's, firsthand. It's interesting that you say that because at one point in time, it was almost a prerequisite, mm -hmm. you know, to have served this country mm -hmm. um, for you to hold that office. It was almost a prerequisite. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, um, that sort of went out in the, in the, um, in the, in the 90s, mm -hmm. um, more modern times and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I, I think it's, it's an admirable, um, it's admirable if you have served this country mm -hmm. because you can see things from a the military perspective. perspective and then you have that military perspective and you have the perspective of, you know, of, of the political perspective as well, mm -hmm. you know. So I think it gives you a unique sort of picture, a unique sort of way of looking at things. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, the choices that we have now, I don't think either one of them have served um, or, were, or, you know, a form of military. Um, but, you know, um, I, I'm glad you said that. I think that that, that would probably give, you know, a um, you know, that, that would give like a candidate a unique perspective, like our own governor. Um, you know, is a veteran. Is a veteran. Mm -hmm. You know, special forces veteran, as as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. So he has a very unique perspective mm -hmm. on the very things that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So even though he's a political, um, you know, he's in a political um, arena, mm -hmm. but he has that um, perspective as well. So, mm -hmm. so I think I, I I think that that only makes him a stronger leader. I, I, I think I think so too. Yeah. Um, I, only because, I, and I've had family members that have died in war, friends mm -hmm. that have died in war. You know, my father was a veteran. I, the uncles and nieces that even now, when they allow females to be in the military, that that are that are in the military, and so that's why it's it's very special to me about veterans. You, you know what I mean? And, and people that who that have served, um, because. Just some of the stories that you hear, it's just, and then just some of the things that have gone on with people and, and coming home with no them. In fact, we used to have, for a minute there, we even had people from the Wounded Warrior uh, come on the show okay. um, at one point. Um, 
and then we would have the um, the mothers for the veterans that have passed on. They, okay. they would come on the show as well. Um, and then you know we got into this other thing that was more important for us to let the people know what was going on, like in mortgages and finances, and, and even with the veterans, what's mm -hmm. going on with them. So I, I think that it's very important that you know um, I, I I try not to pass opinions about political candidates because I don't want anybody to say that I said X, Y, Z, but I, I, but I do say this, do your homework. You need to look up and see what, and you need to pay attention, okay? That goes back to what you were saying about paying attention, being spiritually aware, okay, and, and, and in fellowship and, and then helping out your fellow man and talk, reaching out to your family. All of that, all of that is part of it. You got to do all of it. You can't just do one piece. You got to do all of it. This is the most important election that I would say in my lifetime that we need to take a look at this time. Okay, I look at all of them, but even though these two candidates have run in the past because of all of the whatever that went on, you understand what I'm saying? They are going to really be prepared to do whomever. They're going to be prepared to to make sure or ensure. So I'm saying, do your homework. So there's no question. Mm -hmm. If you do your co-work and you get out and vote, young people, y'all have power. You have power that you never had before. You weren't able to vote at one time at the age that you can vote now. Take that in stride and, and do what you need to do and, and the, the look up and see what's going on in your neighborhood with everybody that's running. I'm not just talking about one candidate. I'm talking about everybody because the sheriff, like I said, Donald Attorney Bell was the one that showed me and talked about on this show about how much power that the sheriff had, okay? And I didn't know that. And I, and I always go back to Bob Marley, you know, I ain't mm -hmm. understand why he, he, he shot the sheriff and he mm -hmm. ain't shoot the deputy. Now I understand, okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm just saying that it's so important that you, for any elected official, I also, now this is my opinion, and not, not opinions of the studio, not opinions of, you know, the, the corporation, the city of Maryland, whatever. This is my, what I'm going to say. I really think that they should have terms for Supreme Court. They should be termed, you know. I think that they should have terms for the people that sit in Congress, okay, even though they're voting on, but after so many terms that they should, you know, can't mm -hmm. run anymore. I think that they should have term limits on, on certain things that nobody should be, sitting in one particular place for life, okay? Um, and so we see what, what is happening in, in some of the foreign countries where those people started out in a democracy where they did have elections and then the elections became that really, really rough for you to go to mm -hmm. and now those people that are in charge are for life, mm -hmm. okay? Because you don't have elections like you should. So you need to pay attention to that as well, you know? Um, so. I can say again, go out there and get, and I don't have no stock in this company, Schoolhouse Rock, okay? Go back and see what the laws are. And, and don't, I'm so glad, but you know, I don't like to talk about this subject right here, but I'm mm -hmm. glad you brought it up because it needed to be said. We tell people to vote, but you know, um, I really appreciate you, and we did what God wanted us to do, because he had us touch on some stuff today. Didn't we've run on a wide range here, you know. <laughs> Today we've you, gone through the valleys and the mountains. <laughs> it's amazing. Yes. And none of it's scripted. It's all by spirit. Yep. He leads the directions, you know. So I thank you. It was supposed to be our special time, and I thank I thank him. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah. And um, I want to wish everybody out there a good evening, and uh, thank you for watching. And I want to say as well, and I want to say to you, may God bless you all, or whatever religion that you're in, be blessed and be safe.